Hey everyone, welcome to episode four of Daily IoT. It has been a long day. Uh, I have not been feeling well, but I just couldn't put off recording another day. I had to get this together and put it out because things are happening in the world of Internet of Things and uh, it's my job to get it out to you guys. So let's start with news. Uh, biggest news this week uh, on Monday, it was announced that SoftBank, a company out of Japan, is paying $32 billion to acquire ARM uh, out of the UK. Now, if you haven't heard of ARM, I'm sure you have. It is a, um, a company that designs chips, it's chip architecture. They don't actually manufacture uh, chips, but the, the chip, the ARM design is in so many devices. Last year alone, I think it was like 14 billion chips that are based on ARM. Uh, if you have an iPhone, the uh, main processor in there is ARM based. And so uh, pretty much, like I say, if you have a smartphone, it's probably got an ARM based uh, chip in it. And so uh, they are hoping to the, the uh, majority shareholder of SoftBank says that in 20 years, they would like to be producing 1 trillion ARM based chips a year as a goal. And so there's a lot of speculation around why would SoftBank, a company out of Japan, buy ARM? Um, personally, ARM is a good bet for anybody to buy. It's They're growing like crazy. Their, their output, uh, ARM-based chips are increasing so fast every year. Um, but you know, the SoftBank CEO says that their three main focuses are artificial intelligence, smart robots, and the internet of things, which ARM seems to be a good fit for that. However, they their last big acquisition was Sprint. And so I don't know where Sprint falls into artificial intelligence, smart robots, and internet of things. So anyway, there's a lot of talk about um, why they bought it and, and this and that, whatever, but it doesn't matter. It's, a, it's big news in the world of Internet of Things. SoftBank purchasing ARM for $32 billion. Be interested to see uh, how that plays out. They've said that they're gonna keep the management team at ARM intact. They're gonna leave the culture and let them continue to run it. Um, but we'll see uh, how that goes moving forward. The other piece of news I wanna mention just really quick is uh, the Onion Omega 2 was announced and is now on Kickstarter. You can back that. Uh, it's the second iteration of the, uh, let's see, I've got one right here, actually. Onion Omega. A little, um, based on OpenWRT, I've, I've made some videos on it. Uh, the original one was $19. They have worked with uh, manufacturing and, and parts and distribution. And the, the Omega 2 is going to come in two flavors. The Omega 2 will be $5. The Omega 2 Pro will be $9. Uh, it's got more memory and... They've added some things based on feedback from the original Omega, so pretty exciting. I will link up down uh, below in the description uh, how you can head over to Kickstarter and back that if you're interested. Um, that's other IoT news this week. Okay, the next thing I wanna talk about, again, I wanna keep giving updates on my Internet of Things button that I've been working on as a project. Uh, again, it's more for just learning to, to go through this process of iterating, and uh, I've been having a bear of a time with it because of HTTP connection. So I need to obviously make a web call, it's an Internet of Things button, but I'm not using the particle cloud. And so I found out there's a, a very popular HTTP client library for particle devices, but it's not incredibly reliable. So that's the first thing that I learned. Uh, the second thing was when you feel like you need to make adjustments to a library where you can and can't do that. So if you're using the particle web build, uh, which is their web IDE, you can pull in libraries like the HTTP client and they just, they're automatically included and you can start using them in your main INO or C++ file. However, you can't change them. And so I got to a point where I felt like there was something in the library that wasn't quite right and I needed to make a change, but you can't do that in the web IDE. And so that's when you'll want to move over to the particle dev environment, which is a local IDE based on the Atom project. And so you, you download that, you can run it locally on your machine. Uh, that's where you can pull in files, make changes to any libraries you want, and just gives you a little bit more finer grain control of what you can do. And so there's these, these three levels of particle building. There's the web IDE called particle dev. There's the local IDE called particle, sorry, I'm getting that backwards. The web IDE is particle build. 
the local IDE is particle dev, and then they also have a command line version if you want to get even more fine-grained control of uh, files that you're compiling and binaries that you're producing. And so uh, that's been a lot of fun figuring that out. Another one that I'm actually going to do a microcast on is the importance of typing, especially on embedded project, projects, uh, using things like an unsigned int 8 type versus an int type and how you can really get caught if you're not careful with those, uh, but you do need to be conscious of what you're choosing. And so learning a lot of stuff about that. Um, again, I would just encourage anybody, if you're interested in the Internet of Things, grab a platform, grab a particle photon, grab an electron, grab an Omega or an Edison or anything and just get started, get a project. I, I think something that the, the Internet of Things button has helped me understand even more than I did before is having a project is crucial. If you want to learn Internet of Things and get involved, think of some cool Internet of Thingsy project that you want to do and just start there and start, what do I need to get it going? It's hard to just say, let me buy a, a chip and learn Internet of Things because you'll get into that about an hour and be like, I don't really know what to do. But if you have this end goal in mind, uh, I think it really helps to uh, focus your learning. And so sort of a suggestion. Uh, anyway, that's it for today. Just a quick episode uh, to cover some news and some pro uh, progress on the Internet of Things button. Um, please, uh, first of all, I want to real quick before I close, just anybody who's watching this, I just really want to say thank you. I really appreciate it. Uh, I would love feedback. If there's something that you want to see or hear me talk about or cover, I would love for you to tell me down in the comments. I really want to make these as, as valuable as I can um, in helping people who are coming into the Internet of Things um, ecosystem. So hope everybody has an awesome day and until next time, happy hacking.